so today i have come with another new lecture and this lecture is based on the production of another important chemical that is caustic soda as well as chlorine so with the help of a single flow sheet i'll explain both the compounds that is production of chlorine and production of caustic soda also and why is that because a single process will yield both chlorine and caustic soda and they have to be discussed with the help of only a single process so basically the raw material in the production of chlorine and caustic soda is brine and what is brine i hope you are acquainted with that nacl so an aqua solution of nacl is required in the production of caustic soda and chlorine and how is it that it is electrolyzed so with the help of an electrolysis cell it is electrolyzed we get caustic soda and another side we get chlorine so it is a very easy and simple process with the help of the cells we have used two cells here that is a diaphragm cell and a mercury cell and with the help of these two cells we get caustic soda and chlorine so without wasting any time let us start with the flow sheet see we have brine stored in the reservoirs but they need to be purified we don't know what impurities they are containing so we need to purify the brine and for the purification they are sent to a purifier and this purifier has addition of very small quantities of sodium carbonate even barium carbonate can be used over here so soda ash is added in the brine purifier and this removes calcium magnesium or iron salts that may have been present over there as a sludge these are removed as a sludge and why do they need to be removed this is also very important to know that why those impurities can't be retained in the solution why they are removed see we have a diaphragm cell over here and this diaphragm cell is kind of like this and this is your diaphragm and this diaphragm may clog up due to the presence of impurities so it may dysfunction the whole industry so we need to get rid of the impurities and that's why our first step is to purify brine solution so this is your brine purifier now after brine purification it is again sent through a filter because there might be chances that some few amount of impurities are left behind the in the brine purifier that is why they, they are sent to the filter now this filter removes all the chances of presence of impurities again it is sent to a steam ex that is a heat exchanger with uh, which is passing in which steam is being passed and why is that so as to raise the temperature of the brine solution it is raised to a temperature then it passes through the diaphragm cell and this is very important to be discussed how a diaphragm cell works and what is exactly have happening inside the diaphragm cell so from the flow sheet you can understand one thing what's that we have an arrow showing that hydrogen is coming out of the diaphragm cell nacl is being passed into the diaphragm cell chlorine chlorine also comes out and there is something which goes out of the diaphragm cell now this is your diaphragm cell this has two compartments anode compartment and cathode compartment this is your anode and this is your cathode compartment and it is separated by a semi permeable membrane this is your diaphragm and then what happens the brine solution enters the anode compartment okay and it also flows into the cathode compartment through the membrane now the chloride ions in the anode are oxidized to chlorine the chlorine is produced in the anode and at the cathode water is split into two that is oh minus h plus ions and with the help of oh that is hydroxyl ions the na plus ions combine with the oh minus ions and they give us naoh and this NaOH is nothing but your caustic soda. Let us understand with the help of the chemical reactions involved. So this is these are your anodic and cathodic reactions. You can see at the anode, chlorine is oxidized to, sorry, chloride ions are oxidized to chlorine. At the cathode, Na plus 
that is sodium ions react with water molecule and an electron and they give us sodium hydroxide with the production of hydrogen also and the overall reaction is that NaCl reacts with water and gives NaOH H2 and Cl2 now you can see that these reactions sorry these gases are ejected through the diaphragm cell and your NaOH is produced now this NaOH is concerned not highly concentrated it is a very dilute liquor containing 20 to 30 percent of NaOH solution only this has to be concentrated so how are we going to concentrate it in heat transfer you must have come across the term multi effect evaporators so evaporators are there triple effect or uh, more than three evaporators are used in a series in order to concentrate the slurry in order to concentrate the liquor so with the help of multi effect evaporators these are concentrated to 50 percent of solution and this caustic soda is again sent for more concentration or purification from the slurry we get the slurry that we get or the sludge you can say that we get from the multi effective operators it is sent through a centrifuge where it is washed and basically separation occurs over here whatever NaOH we have in the sludge it is again sent to the another vessel to get stored caustic soda is sent to another vessel to get stored and if any NaCl that is uh, brine is present then it is sent to a salt saturator so as to recycle it and reuse it so in the salt saturator we have again brine and this brine is sent to a filter again so that the impurities which it may contain can be removed then sent to a reservoir this is your constant head feed tank this is nothing but a reservoir which is where it is stored and from here it is sent to another cell that is mercury cell so this is your mercury cell now in the mercury cell the pure brine solution is sent with the help of electricity the NaCl solution is broken into ions at the anode chloride ions give chlorine by the help of oxidation and at the cathode Na plus ion is reduced and it gives metallic sodium now this metallic sodium reacts with mercury present over there metallic mercury and with the help of that an amalgam is formed we don't need amalgam basically so we need to get um, Na from the amalgam also so the liquid amalgam passes through another reactor see you can see the another reactor over here this is the reactor which i am talking about this is also known as denuding tower or decomposer basically decomposition of the sodium amalgam is taking place that is why it is known as denuding tank or decomposer where it reacts the amalgam reacts with the water in the presence of a graphite catalyst to form caustic soda to form caustic soda and hydrogen don't forget the hydrogen over here you can see the reactions occurring in the mercury cell at the anode chloride ions are oxidized to give chlorine at the cathode Na plus ions are reduced to give metallic sodium and metallic sodium reacts with metallic mercury and both of them form an amalgam at deuneeding or decomposer tank a reactor the amalgam with the help of water gets reacted and it gives sodium hydroxides that is caustic soda and water sorry hydrogen and metallic mercury and you can see our overall reaction NaCl reacts with water to give sodium hydroxide chlorine gas and hydrogen so this is all about your mercury cell reaction so let us see that what is happening others in the process you can see the depleted brine that is the brine is again sent for the recycle and it is sent to the salt saturator now the depleted brine because it is slightly dilute form so in order to saturate it in order to concentrate a little bit it is sent to a salt saturator again now the mercury which we are getting in the denuding tank it is sent to the mercury cell we can't waste that the chloride ions the sorry are oxidized are reduced to chlorine and this chlorine gas is sent 
for purification we'll come to that the hydrogen gas is uh, ejected here and water is also applied to the denuding tank so this is all happening in the flow sheet now the NaOH which is formed it might contain some impurities and it is sent through a filter and your caustic soda 70% in concentration is ready and this is now sent for sale or even for more concentration if we require more concentrated NaOH then it is sent for concentration also. So this is all about the production of caustic soda and let us summarize a little bit before we jump into chlorine part. You see brine solution from the reservoirs is taken in a brine purifier with the help of soda ash it is purified and calcium, magnesium and iron salts are removed as a sludge. Sent through a filter again so as to remove any impurity which might have got into it again. Sent through a steam exchanger, heat exchanger in which steam is passing through and it is again its temperature is raised to a certain extent. Sent to a diaphragm cell where hydrogen and chloride ions, chlorine, chlorine, chlorine gas is ejected and NaOH is present is formed in 20 to 30 percent concentration. This NaOH is passing through a multiple effective evaporator where it is concentrated more and 50 percent caustic soda is ready. This is sent to a centrifuge again in order to separate NaOH and NaCl solution which might have got and then this NaCl solution is sent to a salt saturator. From the salt saturator of it passes through a filters to avoid any kind of impurity. Then stored in a reservoir and then the NaCl solution is sent to a mercury cell where again we have NaOH, chloride, sorry chlorine gas and then we form hydrogen also with the help of the denuding tank. So this is all happening in your soda, sodium hydroxide production process. And if we talk about chlorine now, you can see that from the diaphragm cell we are getting chlorine and this chlorine is sent through a heat exchanger. Again we are getting chlorine from where? From the mercury cell and this is again sent to a heat exchanger. So both the chlorine uh, sources they are combined, they are sent to a heat exchanger where they are cooled. Then sent to a dryer that is a dehydrating tank or a drying tank where sulfuric acid is sprinkled over the chlorine and with the help of that it is scrubbed and dried. Again sent through a heat exchanger to cool down a little bit. Now it has to be stored in liquid form so it is compressed with the help of the compressor and again sent to a refrigerating process where freon refrigerant is used. It is then uh, cooled to a temperature of about minus 30 degrees celsius and then it is ready to be stored. So this was all about the chlorine and caustic soda process. I hope you got it. And if you face any problem in understanding any certain process, you can please ask in the comment section. And thank you for watching this video.